we're going to start with a little little seeded stuff today. Take it a little easy. There's some people who like the, the seeded stuff better, so. My chair was way back there. Way back there. I almost uh, had to reach too far. Almost went over. Right here. Right here. Hands on thighs. Welcome, everyone. This is Ageless Balance. I am Ron, and we are ready to get started today. Seated exercises for the most part. A lot of stretching, a lot of range of motion, and we'll finish it up with standing, chair assist, lower body strengthening for movement and flexibility and strength. All right, hands on thighs. We started there. Roll the shoulder blades back, chest is out. Whew. Take some deep breaths. In through the nose, push the stomach out, out through the mouth. Whew. Arms down to the side. Bring them up halfway, roll the shoulder blades back, chest is out. Deep breath in and exhale as you bring the arms down. <sighs> Again, up on the sides, halfway up, arms parallel with the floor, rotation. Bring those shoulders around, moving the entire shoulder girdle, turning it. Hips stay flat on the chair, nothing moves below the waist. And bring it into the center, to the other side, same thing. Rotate the shoulders. Get that back shoulder to do the leading. It's pushing as hard as it can. Front shoulder just kind of follows along, so it's a straight line. And then it comes back to the middle and down. Shake it out. We're going all the way up overhead. If that is right for you, bring them up. Again, deep breath in through the nose, pushing the stomach out and bringing the arms down. Little shoulder rolls back, forward. And one more time, up overhead, shoulder blades back, chest is out, deep breath in. As you exhale, stop right in the middle, stop right there, and shoulders around one more time. A little more rotation this time. Follow with the chin, chin follows the chest, and back around, other side, same thing. Roll the shoulders, rotate. Don't let the hips turn like mine just did, if you saw that. No, you didn't and arms down. That's why it is so important. Every second, every bit of your movement you have to be conscious of. Be, be alert. Make sure that you're not cheating the stretches or doing something that's going to put you in bodily harm. Hands on the thighs. We're going to roll the shoulders forward. Chin to chest. Shoulders roll down toward the chest. Deep breath in and exhale, bring the hands behind, grab onto the back of the chair, roll the shoulder blades back. Don't go too far with it. Just again, we just started, take your time. This is laid back Wednesday. Deep breath in and exhale, coming forward again. <sighs> exhale, collapsing the shoulders. Deep breath in, feel the stretch through the upper back. One more time, grab onto the back of the chair, roll the shoulder blades back, chest is out. And exhale, bring it all back down again. Left ear, left shoulder, right straight down. Looking out in front of you so that you're not bringing that chin down to the chest. You don't want to put that kind of stress on the neck. Right straight down in the side. One movement, side bend. And just hold it in there. Don't bring the shoulder up to do this. Keep the shoulder where it is. They don't have to touch. There's no law that says the ear has to touch the shoulder. It shouldn't, actually. And bring it up. Roll the shoulder blades back a little bit. Going to the other side. Same thing. Ear down. Feel a great stretch through the neck. This feels so good. Base of the skull all the way down through the shoulders into the top of the upper arm. Deep breath in. Bring it up again. We're going to go back over to the other side. Go into that left. Take the right hand. Push the palm down. Get a little extra stretch. Go at an angle, right straight down. Move it around a little bit till you feel that stretch going all the way up the upper arm into the neck. And back in. Again, this is be careful. Watch every movement of this other side that you're not starting to bring that chin down or that you're not starting to bring that elbow up. Staying in a straight line, keeping the spine in neutral. And back. Arms up halfway. We're going to bring the chin around to the right first. Rotate right out to the side. 
Start following that hand into the middle, keeping the shoulder blades back, looking right straight out in front. And off to the other side, follow the finger, working the vestibular system. Being able to turn your head, looking at something near without falling over, without getting dizzy. Back to the center. If you do get dizzy, stop in the middle, take a second, and then to the other side. Do it on your terms. See if you can get back just a little bit farther this time. Roll the shoulder blades back farther, get the head back. And back to center one last time. Hand off. Other side. Get those shoulder blades back. Arm's going to go back a little farther. If you can follow the eyes, follow the finger with the eyes, you're going to get just a little more rotation. Come back to center. Drop it down. Small shoulder rolls back. Small shoulder rolls forward. Like this. Shake it out. All right, chin to chest. Right down here. Looking down at the floor. Get the shoulder blades back on this one. So as the chin comes forward, shoulders are going to want to roll with it. We don't want that. We want to stretch out the upper neck or the neck and the upper shoulders, upper back. So chin to chest. And we're going to take a rotation. First the chin follows the chest up on the sides. And then once you get all the way up as far as you can get, rotate, bringing the chin up just a little bit higher, looking right out in front. Don't look over the top. You should be looking parallel to the floor. Chin back to the chest. Slide it along the other way. Get it out there and then rotate the head. Bring it up. And one more time back down. We'll stop right there. Head up. Shoulders back. Lower body, getting the heart rate up just a little bit, getting ourselves situated. Shoulder blades back, starting with heels coming up, just heels, doing that pedaling through the heel, bring it up and up, both at once if you want. If you can do right, left, that's great. It works the brain a little harder. Get the synapses firing better so that you have a quicker reaction time. The more you can work left, right, together, opposite directions, Anything that cross body, you're going to be working the brain just a little bit harder, giving you much better ability to think faster. All right, now heel up first, then ball of the foot, just like we did the heel raise, but this time bring the ball of the foot up off the heel, off the floor, just a little bit. Keep the shoulder blades back and chest out. Make sure you're not leaning forward. If you can, come out to the edge of the chair as much as possible. If you sit all the way back in the chair, you are not working all the muscles through the core. You want to try to get yourself up here, shoulder blades back, chest is out, on the edge. I'd rather you keep the feet really low, just barely coming off the floor, and be out to the edge of the chair than sitting back in the chair and getting the knees up nice and high. Really work on that posture so that you have that alignment when you do walk. We're strengthening up the muscles in this order, in this, in this form, so that that's where they strengthen up and that's where they go to automatically. And up, up, and heel out with a heel dig. So out and out. Heel comes up first, ball of the foot, tap the heel and bring it back in. So we're getting a leg extension in here at the knee. And we're also working up and down, working the hip flexors to lift that leg up as we bring it in. So up using the quads, strengthen, lengthen, and back in. Up, strengthen and lengthen. Up, out, and in. Heel dig, in, out. Bring it back one more each side. One to the right, one to the left. To the side we go, find your neutral position. So little by little, whenever you do these, you're going to find that you're going to start to roll forward just a little bit. Hold on to the chair or be constantly checking your posture. Or at the very least, like we do right now, at the start of this movement, make sure you get yourself into that neutral position. Again, shoulder blades back, chest is out. You're at the edge of the chair. We're going to just step out to the side and back in. Out and in. Stationary leg. Knee stays over the ankle. Nothing moves on the stationary side. Sits bones stay right on the chair, so don't lean out and tap. This is shoulder blades back, chest out, using these muscles, hip flexors to lift the leg, abductor muscles on the outside of the hips to pull it out, 
inner thighs to pull it back in. The body is working here heavily. Core is tight to keep you up. Feel the shoulder blades, muscles working between the shoulder blades, holding those shoulder blades back, which keeps the chest out and chin up. Out, in, and in. A couple more. Just, just a couple more right here. And right here, bring it back. All right. Feet out. Toes out, heels out, toes out, heels out, and they align. Bring them in. Toes in first. Heels come toward each other. Toes in, heel in, and bring it all together in the center. Back out. Don't let the knees move on this one. Out. No rotation there, no turning. We're using the feet, ankles to do that rotation, to pull us in. Muscles on the outside of the ankles. One more time, out, out, front and back. We're using them all and bring it back in again. In, in, and to the middle. Feet apart, right here. Toes out, 45 degree angle going into a V, creating what would be a plie stance. Hands on the thighs, hip hinge down. Don't go very far. Feel the muscles stretching on the inner thighs. Deep breath. Use the hands. Use the hands completely. Roll the shoulder blades back and push up. Don't let your torso bend at all. So you don't want to go down and then come back up using the head as momentum to get you back up. Go down between the legs again. Knees stay over the ankles. Don't let them collapse. You want that stretch on the inner thighs. And then push up through the hands. It's a push-up. It is a push-up. Working the chest. Working the upper back. All right. One more time. Down. Drop the hands off the thighs and just let them hang out in front. Roll the arms or lift the arms up. Roll the shoulder blades back and bring everything back so you're in a seated position. Upright. Shoulder blades are back. Sh as tight as you can get them. Feel the stretch in the chest, front of the shoulders. And then coming back down, keeping the shoulder blades back the entire time so that you don't lean forward. If you squeeze those shoulder blades together through this, you'll be able to come down without bending the back. One more time. Arms first, shoulder blades, bring it up. You're still pushing through the feet as well, using all the big muscles to do the work to get you up and back down without hurting yourself. And back down. Now, Shoulders to the floor, eyes right straight down on the floor, not looking behind you at all. You don't want that chin coming down to the chest. Just roll the shoulders down. Come down as deep as you can. Whatever's comfortable for you. Stretch up the back, hamstrings, glutes, and coming back up. Shoulder blades first, arms up. Bring it all back up over the top. Hands up overhead and back down again little shoulder rolls back small you don't have to be big but you can go bigger if you like if it's right for your shoulders if you want a little more if it feels good and you feel like you can do a little more go for it if it starts to feel bad you've gone too far don't do that anymore opposite direction start small and again Make them wider as you can, as is possible for your shoulders to do right now today. So remember, you may only get this little tiny roll right now today, but little by little, you're going to get a little more stretch through there. And as you do, they're going to start getting bigger and bigger. The circles will and bring the arms down. When we don't use the muscles, they get a sheathing over them that don't allow them to stretch anymore. We have to break down that sheathing and then get the stretch back into the muscles again. So it's a slow process, small, 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 small accomplishments at a time. But take what you get. All right, arms up on the side, goal posts. Shoulder blades are back. Bring the elbows into the middle. Squeeze it. Feel the upper back stretch. Keep the elbows up if you can, upper arms parallel with the floor. And back again. Only do this to the range of motion that feels good for your shoulders. Just bring it forward. Elbows don't have to touch. What you're looking for is that stretch through the upper back. Deep breath in between the shoulder blades. 
all the way through the shoulders, through the shoulder blades, right to the spine. And in one more time, bring it in, hold it, and back out again, bring the arms down, all the way down on the side, palms out, roll the shoulders. All right, we have to do a side bend because we haven't yet. Left hand down towards the floor, right hand, both hands by the side. Let's do that. Bring up the left hand first, up over the top. Arm, start here. Arm is right next to the ear. You're reaching up as high as you can get. And then bending at bottom of the ribs through the obliques, stretching the rib cage. That's all you want. You don't need to lean. If you do lean, you don't feel any more stretch. There's no point in that. Arm up. Use that hand as momentum to bring you up and over on the other side. Hand right straight up. Ear to upper arm. And then bring the arm over. Stretch it out. Keep yourself upright. Shoulder blades back. So I started to feel my back tweaking. Middle of the back. I was having problems with lower back. I could feel it. I needed to get back in my neutral position with the shoulder blades back. And then I start getting the stretch just through the ribs. And back down one more time each side. Get a little more bend this time. Up and over. Reach to the side. Stretch through the shoulder, through the ribs, maybe the obliques going down to the hips. And other side up and over. Palm forward, palm down, wherever you want it. I'm fine. palm forward gives me a little more stretch through the arm. Get the head up on the inside of the upper arm. Get that ear up there and... Bring it back. So just bringing the head down farther. Feels like we're going into more of a bend. We're not. We're just putting all sorts of stress on the neck. So keep the spine in neutral position as much as you can. All right. Next, we're going to take legs out. So we did that step out, step in. This time with the legs extended, toes up. The whole leg comes out to the side and comes back in, out and in so keeping the feet out and back lift hip flexors do the lifting here out tap the heel bring it back in and set it down you're going to feel this in the front of the hips as well as outside of the hips shoulder blades are back don't lose your neutral posture on this it's easy to do you start leaning backwards because those uh, legs have all sorts of ballast out there you want to try to or all sorts of weight out there you want to try to balance it out and in. If this is not doable for you, keeping the heels on the floor, bend the knees a little more and bring it back in. That's where your modification comes from on this is bringing those heels closer to the chair, less lever length, less of a workout for those muscles if they're not ready for it. But again, little by little, you can start extending those out and out and in because we really want to work these outer hips as well as the hip flexors. These are all about walking lifting the foot up, keeping the hips stable. And in, out, and in. So when I, I do see an exercise a lot with both legs out and in. That's really hard on the back. If you're not in the perfect position with that, if you have to bounce forward to bring the legs up, you're putting all sorts of stress on that lower back by hitting it hard all at one time. I go with the belief you don't lift both feet up off the ground at the same time when you're seated. It's really hard. All right. Hands down to the side, up over the side, seated jacks. Arms up over the top, leg goes out to the side, out and in. Shoulder blades are back, arms are in alignment with the torso, and back in, out and in. Couple more, up. Up, one more, one more. Do it, do it. You did it, good job. Rope climbing, the thing I hated in in uh, grade school gym. Arm down, arm down, pull. You're grabbing onto that, you're pulling your weight up. It's feeling just like it, like you're bringing your torso, your body up the rope, up. And the great thing with this, uh, there's no rope. <laughs> End up, you just get to tighten up the muscles, clench the fist, make that shoulder really tight as you pull, thinking that you are 
climbing that rope. And up, skip a rope. Down, pull. And again, tighten up those muscles, really feel them work. Up and up and bring that down. Let's give the shoulders a break. Ankles, we're going back to the ankles because it's so important. Toe in, toe out, that's it. Not hard, using the muscles in the front of the lower leg, those shin muscles to pull the toe in, using the calf muscles to pull the heel up. Flex and extend. Toe in, toe out, in. Circles around. You can go clockwise, you can go counterclockwise, you can go whatever direction you want because you're going to go the other way too. And ankle is the only thing that moves. The leg's not going around in a circle, knee's not flipping all over the place, just the ankle. You're holding everything else tight. And opposite direction, I almost forgot that. With that big deal I made about going the opposite direction at the beginning and then forgot all about it. Down, other side. First thing, toe in, heel in. Shin muscles, calf muscles. Remember muscles shorten, they pull. So you're bringing them in as they, as they tighten. The joint has to move to accommodate as that muscle gets shorter, foot comes in. Heel comes in, toe comes in, out. So we're strengthening and lengthening. I like that. I just made that up today. That was really good. T-shirt time. Strengthen and lengthen with ageless balance. Up and out. All right, rotations. The one way. So for me, I can never get good circles with my left ankle. My right ankle, yeah, I got great circles with that. This one's kind of, I don't know, octagonal. Octagonal. There we go. Let's learn how to talk. And other way, get as much rotation just through the ankle. Remember, ankles are the base of your support. Everything works from them. All of your balance is on top of those ankles. And so they have to be strong. They have to be flexible to be able to give to keep you upright. Did you go both ways? I did. I should have said that. Go the other way now. Okay, we're good. Back up, top side. Arm up over the head, stretch through the chest. And back down. Shoulders, rib cage, up and over. Bring it back down. Up, palm up, drive to the ceiling. Cross body, reach. Arm is right next to the ear. So we're keeping that spine straight, in a straight line. So we can do a side bend without hurting the vertebrae. Up. Push, rotate, other side, same thing. Push and spin. Out and turn. You know where we go next with this cross body. Shoulders rotate as you push. So it's across and out. But making sure that as you come around, both shoulders are making that rotation. Again, center of the back, the thoracic spine. That is the only place you have rotation in your spine, nowhere else. So we need to get those shoulders to turn, keeping the hips flat, so only the middle of that back turns. And we have the spine going right straight up and down, so that all it's doing is rotating evenly. Around, reach, and we're good. Grab a drink of water. We've gone way too long without having a drink. Stay seated, please. Please stay seated. Please remain seated until the plane has come to a full stop. It took my wife almost 12 hours to get from Albuquerque to Madison, and that's flying. It's not even driving. And the time before that, it took over 13 hours Weather, um, missed transfers, uh, engine, or uh, they had to bring the plane into the hangar to fix it before you go flying. That always bothers me. 
here, something on the plane doesn't work. We're going to try to fix it. Then we'll send it up in the air. It always bothered me. All right. That's why I don't like planes. Next. Next. What are we doing? I got it. Palms up. Palms forward. There we go. So, palms out. Back of the hand goes toward the top of the hand and bring it up. Out. Wrists. Wrists have a couple problems. One, they lock up from lack of movement and from arthritis. Same with fingers. Up and out. Actually, with all joints. But the wrists we can work with. Back and up. Palms down, same thing. Reach. Right here, palms, are, or palms come in. You should feel the stretch through the top of the arm. Up. And you feel it on the inside of the arm. Down and up. Hands on the thighs. Shoulder blades are back. We're going to do a squeeze lightly, making a fist, and then open it up, splaying the fingers as much as you can. Get them out as wide as you can. Bring them in nice and tight and out, reaching as far as you can. We need to get those joints moving in and keep them that way. So even if we have great flexibility in the knuckles, we still need to do this so that we don't lose that in and out. In. Splay it. Bring it in one more time. Fingers out. Fingertip. Thumb. Thumb to fingertip. Going one to the other. Don't look at your fingers to make sure where your fingertips are. Let the brain figure it out. Close your eyes, in fact. Make the brain do the work to know where those fingers are in space. All of those little sensors and the joints and the uh, extremities, you need to be able to feel where those are at in your head, out and in, out and in, and release. That's just one of the many proprioception exercises. Thumbs in against the palm, fingers over the top, squeeze it. Feel the knuckles working. Feel the stretch in the thumb. Again, we get this tightness on the inside of the, of the thumb into the palm of the hand. Bring it out and stretch it out. This time, fingers come in first. Thumbs over the top. Bigger stretch for the thumbs. And relax that. Shake it out. Palms up, palms down. Just the wrists. Do the these things right here, top of, top of the hands. Wrists, do the rotation. Keep the fingers splayed around. Really concentrate on those elbows don't move. That's why you've got them down on your legs so that you're not like letting the elbows go out and back in and doing crazy things like that. No crazy stuff. Up and back down. Up and back down. Let's take it up a little higher. We're going to go up into the arms. Pushing out, shoulder blades back, chest is out. Rotation through the shoulders this time. So taking those bones that go up the arm and rotating them within the shoulder. Shoulders are universal joints. They move in all directions. They're supposed to. So we need to make sure that they do. And once they do, we need to make sure they continue to do that. Again, joints, especially those universal joints, shoulders and hips, are just so touchy. They lock up. We stop using them like we should. Around and back. Around and back. Bring it down. Whoo! Felt that. We're going to go back to the march. Up and up. Lower body. Shoulder blades back. Get the feel for this first. Elbows up and out. Shoulders come around as the knee comes up and back down. Working hip flexors and obliques outside of the core, lower abs, around. This is not about reaching down and touching that knee. It is about rotating the shoulders as you bring the leg up. You can bring that knee across, up and across, but don't let the sits bones move off the chair. That's your cue. You want to make sure that you can always feel the sits bone against the chair. Around and back. It's not moving. Weight is not shifting. 
heavier on one side, stays even all the way through this, around and back, around and back. Elbows out front, and this time knee comes up, arm comes down, and back up. Squeeze and up. So you're getting that core involved here, bringing the shoulders. Shoulders come down, squeeze the core, and back up again. Down and up. And up. Get to that full seated position again. Back to neutral before you start again. You should feel this in the upper and lower abs. Right below the rib cage, right above the hips. Go into the belly button. And up. Bring it up. Make sure your knees, toes, and hips are in alignment. Don't let that knee go to the outside. Got mixed up. There we go. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Down. Arms down. Relax. Just relax. All right. Heel pumps again. Bringing the heels up off the floor. A little more if you can. A little faster. What I want you to see if you can do is push off, keeping the heels up off the floor. Pushing off the ball of the foot. Lifting that heel. Feel the muscles working in the back of the leg to make this happen. Up, 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 up. And then you can do that turn in the chair. Go as fast as you can. Get the arms going with it as well. You're going into a run. As fast as is right for you. I mean, that's whatever it is. Maybe it's right here. You're getting winded. Slow down. Slow down. You want to get the heart rate up, but not too high. You just want to feel that it's a little work going on there. Having to breathe just a little bit deeper. And bring it back down. That was the cardio. The cardio section of our workout. All right. Hands up front. Palms down. Roll them in. Facing each other. Narrow rows first. We're going to do is a hip hinge on this. Elbows come back. You lean forward. Hinging over the hips, over the thighs. Elbows out, extend, back in, and out. Rotate the hands, palms in, shoulders back, squeezing together, elbows back as far as they'll go. Extending at the elbow, feeling the muscles work in the back of the upper arms. As you bring the arms in, you're going to feel the biceps in the front of the upper arms working. And then out, palms down, roll, bring it in. Shoulder blades are back. Keep that neutral position through the upper body. Spine to the back of the head. Tailbone to the back of the head should be a straight line. Palms in. Reach it back. Shoulder blades together. Extend at the elbow. Squeeze it. Hold it there. Don't lock the elbow out. So you should have just a little bit of a bend. You're going up. You're stopping before you go to full extension. That full extension is really super hard on the elbow. And like any joint, it takes some time to heal if you do hurt it. And if you do hurt it and you can't move it, it's going to start to tighten up. It's going to lock on you and it takes forever to get it back. Out. In. Not forever. It takes a long time. One more time. Bring it in. Shoulder blades back. Out. In. And push. And relax. Standing we go. Sit to stand. Let's do that first. So important. So important. Walk your butt out to the edge of the chair. That glute fold between the thigh and the butt. Heels back just a little behind the knee. Hands on the thighs. We're going to do a hip hinge forward. Taking our momentum out. And then pushing up through the heels. Bringing the hips underneath. You're driving through the ball of the foot to the heels. Coming to full standing. Quadriceps, glutes, big muscle groups. We should be using those to get up. If we go past, if the knee goes past the toe, we're trying to use like the toe and the front of the knee and it hurts everything. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's bad for you. All right, shoulder blades back. We're going to work the hamstrings, back of the thighs. Knee points to the floor, leg up. That is super tight on me. And back down again. Hold. Bring it back up. It feel, felt like it wanted to cramp immediately. So I got to warm that muscle up. We did not do that. It's so funny. When you miss a muscle group, you know it. At some point, if you don't warm it up, you're going to feel it that you didn't. Didn't. Up and back down. Stationary leg. 
little bend in the knee, foot flat on the floor, ball the foot to the heel, feel full floor contact. That is not easy to say. S this moving leg, knee keeps pointed right to the floor. How high you bring your heel is up to your body, up to your joints, up to your muscles. They may only stretch so far. And back down, bring it up, hold it. And here's the key. When you get to that end of the range of motion, give it one squeeze and then let it drop. That little squeeze is going to start breaking down in that fascia around the muscle and it's going to let you stretch that muscle out. Until you break that sheathing off around the muscle, that muscle is not going to stretch. All right, other side, same thing. Knee points to the floor, up. You guys get like anatomy and physiology lessons. That was such a good class. To know what's working and why and how it's working is just so important to doing the exercises. If you don't know this exercise is specifically for this hamstring, you don't know that's what you're supposed to be feeling. So it's so important that you understand that. And back down. You're keeping on this foot, flat on the floor, knee with a little bend in so you don't damage the knee. You've got a cushion right there. Foot is flat on the floor, strengthening all the muscles all the way up the leg to keep you in balance so that you're not pushing the hip out, throwing yourself out of alignment. Back down one more time. If your hip kicks out, all of a sudden you've got weight that way. That makes you susceptible to leaning that way, to falling that way because that's where the weight is taking you. You want to be right here over your legs and that means all the muscles have to be strong. All right. My favorite, out to the side, toe forward, shoulder blades are back. Neutral position on this one, stationary leg, little bend in the knee, using these muscles in the outside of the hip and the glutes to lift that out. So you're leading with the heel. And that other hip is really working to stay in alignment over the knees, over the ankle. It wants to kick out, but you're going to hold it right up over where it's supposed to be so that you have all of your weight over your base of support, that leg. And you've got a little bend in the knee so that you're not hurting that joint. Remember, stacked joints. Distribute the weight, distribute the work all the way through each one instead of making just one do it or any one point on a specific joint. Do all the work. You want as much distribution as possible. Up. And back down to the other side. Same thing. Toes forward, shoulders back. Don't lean forward into this. Don't lean the opposite direction. Again, this does nothing if you just lean off to the side, except put you way out of balance in both directions. So you want to make sure you're right over that stationary leg. Hip is in. You're bringing that foot out toe forward so that you're having to use these muscles on the side of the hip and in the butt, side of the butt. Up. Squeeze it. And back down again, strengthening these muscles up. Stabilize the hips and bring it in. Out. Leading with that heel. Hold it and bring it back in. Feel the work happening in that other leg. Perfect. It's exactly what you want. And in. Out. And in one more time. Take it to the outside and bring it back in again. We're going up on the balls of our feet. Grab onto the back of your chair. This is not a balance exercise. This is not a test. We're going to work the backs of the lower leg, those calf muscles, by lifting through the heels. Feel the muscles working in the back of the heel as well. Got those tendons back there, that Achilles tendon. You want to get it up. Get some movement in there. And then let it go back down again. Feet are flat. Ball of the foot. You're coming up on the ball of the foot, not the toes. Little bend in the knees, don't lock out. And back down. So you've got just that little bend. You come right up from underneath, lifting through the heels. You feel the floor from the great toe all the way out to the little toe on the ball of the foot. It's where all of your, your weight should be centered is on that. Toes are not made to bear that kind of weight. Up and back down one more time. Bring it up. Hold up there. Feel those muscles working. See if you can get just a little bit higher. Feels like the muscles are going to cramp up. Stay for one second and then drop back down. We're going to go into a split stance. So back foot. 
flat on the floor, right the uh, opposite leg, that front leg. So for me, left leg is forward, right leg is back. Feet are parallel, knee is over the ankle on that front leg. Find the neutral position. Shoulder blades are back, chest is out, looking right out in front of you. So you've got a straight line going up the back into the skull. And doing a push up, bring yourself down in that stationary position. Don't roll the shoulders. You're going to get nothing out of that. You want that little arch in the lower part of the back and then do a drop toward the back of the seat, feeling the stretch in the calf muscle. The ones we just worked. Just. Feel the stretch. If you're not feeling the stretch, move the foot back just a little bit farther. If you can't keep the heel on the floor, move the foot in just a little bit more. What you're looking for is that stretch in the back of the lower leg, whatever it takes. But a straight back is what's going to give you all the advantage to make that happen. Other side, same thing. Feet are parallel. Front knee is over the ankle. Back foot, heel on the floor. Going into a hip hinge down towards the chair. This is also a great push-up. Chair push-ups, nothing wrong with them. Wall push-ups, same thing. You can do them. You can do them. Counters. Stairs. I do stairs. I love stairs because I grab on up high to one of the higher stairs and then bring myself down, push myself back up again. I can create whatever angle I want, making it as hard or as easy as I want it to be. And push up. Relax. Sit on down. Sit to stand. So what we're going to do, don't just plop down. Walking our feet back to calves against the back of the chair so you know the chair's right there. Shoulder blades back, chest is out. Going into a hip hinge. Back, knees are going to come forward over the laces of the shoes. And slowly with the weight in the back half of the foot, you're going to set your butt down on that chair nice and easy because plopping is so hard on the spine. Very, very hard, especially if you have any osteoporosis. That smack on the couch that you do with your body. The other thing that happens is when you hit, you usually rotate or bend a little bit at the same time. You're putting all sorts of stress on the spine. So just come down nice and slow, nice and easy. <sighs> what are we doing next? Flick slides. Stretch it out. And then bring it back in again. Let that toe slide along the floor. Switch off to the heel. Stretch it out. Control the muscles. Lightly slide on the floor. Don't bring it off the floor. You want to work these muscles, these fine motor muscles in the leg, to pull that foot up just enough that you're still making contact with the floor, but you still have as little contact as possible to slide across it. So out and in. So now you've got that movement with that nice, easy glide. What we're looking at here are the fine motor muscles. The fine motor muscles give us that smooth movement out and back in. Strong, fine motor muscles, which die off first before the big ones do, are the ones that help carry signals. They're the ones that receive the signals so that they move and you have faster reaction time. Up and back out. Other side, same thing. Plus, it's a strength exercise. You're going to feel like crazy in that leg. Because crazy legs back because you're having to keep that foot up. So the muscles are always under tension because that foot is always being lifted just a little bit. And having that control really, really engages all the muscles in the leg out and back in, out. One more time with gusto and back. Back to center, woo, hand outside the knee, other hand grab onto the back of the chair, roll the shoulder blades back, chest is out, chin is looking, chin is up, parallel with the floor, you're looking right straight out in front of you, rotate the shoulders, rotate the chest, bring it around, and then get a little more neck involved if you can, feel the stretch all the way up the spine, roll the shoulder blades back one more time while you're in that rotation. Feel the lower back as that arc, arc in the arch in the lower back engages up, chest comes out, and you'll feel a great stretch in the upper back. It just accentuates the stretch. All right, grab on. Other side, same thing. Shoulder blades are back. Chest is out. 
roll them. One more time, shoulder blades back, chest out. Feel that great extra stretch you get with that? And you're not doing any harm to the back whatsoever. Feet out, hands on the thighs. Down, stretching out that lower back. Roll the head so you're looking down at the floor. And then drop the hands to the floor or as close as you can get. Shoulders down, just relax in there between the legs. Bring the hands up on top of the thighs, pushing through the palms of the hands. Push up all the way up. Feet in. One time, down underneath, bring the arms up overhead. Deep breath in. Through the nose. Stomach out. Exhale, bringing the arms down. One more time. I lied. We're going to do it twice. Down, down, down. Lay on top of those thighs. Bring the arms back up again. Deep breath in through the nose. Start bringing those shoulder blades back, opening up the chest so you can really get a lot of air in those lungs. Push the stomach out and exhale, bringing the arms down. Thank you for being here as always. I super appreciate it. And we will be back on Friday so you can do some more stuff. All right, guys, thank you. Have a great week.